Now, when we read scripture um, in various aspects, different different uh, uh, avenues that it talks about, there's no stopping a baby that's on the way. And as we're seeing right now, when it comes to prophecy and everything, this is a baby that's getting ready to be birthed. And so when you look at it on the physical level, you can't the mother can't tell the baby, hey, stop. The doc doctor can't say, hey, stop when it, the baby's coming, the baby's coming. And so there's no pausing what God has already seen and, and is in control of. And I see it all the time. Well, we can slow things down if we get certain people in place. And I'm not just talking about the United States. I've, I know people in Australia. I know people in Europe. And I know people in Canada who have all said, if we can just get this guy out and get this person in, we'll be able to slow things down. But ultimately, when again, we see God's in control and we Satan with his top down power pyramid, we can see that there's no slowing what the Bible tells us is going to happen. And so the people at the political level, not all of them, not all of them, some of them are just there because, you know, they think that they can do good and, and stuff. And a lot of them, they're trying to do their best. But a lot of the people in important positions, um, they're fully in maybe not knowing who's in control and what the end result is, but they've been blackmailed or they've been promised power or greed or some type of thing in order to control what we see going on. Is this something that you, I, I, I know your answer to this, but for everybody <laughs> out there, is this something that you also see and agree with on that? Completely. And let's go back to kind of how you introduced this, this segment. And that is the fact that so many people in America, particularly are just, under the spell of thinking that somehow the right left political paradigm is going to be the solution. And it, it, it never ceases to stun me just how much of a, of a grip that has on people. It's like, it's like vice grip. And usually no amount of, you know, logical argumentation is going to cause them to break free from it. Um, you know, it's like Mark Twain said, uh, you know, it's easier to fool somebody than to convince them they've been fooled. Right. So, um, you know, an, an analogy that that I just uh, thought of uh, recently, we had an experience with one of our cars where it went through first, my wife went through a, a full service car wash with it, you know, and and it ripped the back windshield wiper off, not just the blade, but I mean, like twisted the metal and broke it off. And oh, wow. <clears throat> so we thought, uh, well, maybe it had started by accident or she bumped it and turned it on. And, and, and so that happened. So I replaced it. Well, the first time I went to replace it. Uh, you know, I bought one, I bought a replacement arm on Amazon and I went and got the wrench and, and man, that thing was on there so tight. I just, I literally could not get it to loosen. And so finally I had to get out a hammer and I put the <laughs> wrench on there and I just popped it really good with a hammer. And that, that broke it. That was the unfreezing uh, event. And I think for a lot of people, it takes some kind of an unfreezing event to really crack the door into the reality that the Republican or Republicrat Democrat, as I call them, system in a in America is completely controlled. It's a uh, you know one bird with two wings, the right wing and the left wing. Uh, you know one street, but it's a one way street. Uh, however you want to look at it, it's it's all controlled. And I think what we are seeing, Zach, is there have been enough unfreezing events lately between you know major world events that started around 2020. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, uh, certain uh, political processes that also took place in 2020. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, the people are starting to wake up and realize that something's not right. Um, but you are, you are spot on. It's, you know, if you think that somehow we can turn this ship around by just who we put in the White House you don't know how the presidential elections work. And this is something that's well-documented. I understand you may not have, have studied it, not you, but, you know, a, a person may not have studied it. Um, and so, you know, again, another uh, famous uh, quote, I think this one was um, Einstein, condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance, right? So at least you owe it to yourself to look into it. Don't just dismiss it. Just because you've never heard about it doesn't mean it's not true. And people need to, to go back and look. I have a whole section at the history of vote rigging. It's fascinating. Actually, I learned a lot through my own study of that way before the digital age and the technology age. I mean, they were rigging votes and how they did it is really interesting. So it's controlled to be sure. Not every aspect, not every election, 
not you know certainly some local elections are still uh, fairly legitimate, but if you think that somehow you're going to elect the next president, you you've really bought into the lie. It is a selection, not an election. And but for some people, that is like fighting words. They just think you're un-American, and you and how dare you? You're you're literally sinning if you don't pretend to vote. And, and I tell people all the time, I'm all for voting. Absolutely. It's a God-given right, and it's a privilege in this country. I just don't believe in pretend voting. And until they understand that it's a pretend game, you know, people will just dutifully continue to, uh, you know, to have that, that grip uh, on, on their life, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's a lot of, I mean, a lot of what you said, I mean, it's true. You look at some, all throughout history, you look at some of the people who who have been quoted regarding when it comes to elections and voting and stuff like that. One of them that I, I always look at is uh, Mayor Amschel Rothschild. And he talked about from the beginning, he says, give me control of the money and I care not who makes the laws. Well, again, we go to this power pyramid. The people who are directing control of, of the financial institutions of the world they don't care who makes the laws, especially since they have people who are in line. You go through a lot of the, the socialist and the communist rulers. One of the most famous one would be Stalin, where he says it's not who votes that matters. It's who counts the votes. Mm -hmm. And we just experienced that. And you want to talk about illusion and deception. And, and I, I've made this point a couple of times recently it has to do with the fact of the same people for the past four years who have been screaming at the top of their lungs about rigging and stolen, uh, stealing and, and all the stuff that we see going on are the same people for the past six months who says we have to vote in order to change what's going on. And I said, well, what has changed between those past four years? Even yourself have said that things are are, are even worse than they were four years ago. So you're telling me that everything has gotten worse except for that one thing. If you're not going to listen to me, if you're not going to listen to you, JB, if, you, if you're not going to listen to these people, at least listen to yourself. I mean, you've right. told yourself for the past four years. Yeah, there's a disconnect there. It's like I must have missed the memo that they finally decided to do away with the digital vote tabulation machines because yeah. you know, that was all over the news uh, back in 2020. And now uh, nothing's changed, as you say, and yet people somehow think they're expecting a different result.